What's up everyone? Ben here with another video for Fluent in Finance, the channel dedicating to teaching you all those things that school never prepared you for. Because if you remember what the Pythagorean theorem is, but you were never taught how to balance a checkbook, then the education system has failed you. It has failed to prepare you for the real world. So today we're going to be talking about saving money. Now, most people are pretty good at saving money when it comes to the big stuff, right? Like, oh, I can't take my family to Disneyland this year because I'm trying to save money. We're pretty good at stuff like that, right? And we're also usually pretty good at identifying things that are out of the norm that we're spending money on. So, for example, there might be a concert in town and, and you really want to go, but you don't want to spend the 50 or 100 bucks or whatever it is to buy tickets. But where we're not good at saving money is, is those little things that have just kind of snuck their way into our everyday lives. This kind of spending has just become part of our lives. It's, it's a habit. It's a part of our ritual. And so we just kind of spend that money without even giving it a second thought. So it's Monday morning and your weekly ritual has begun. You jump in your oversized and overpriced SUV and you head off to work. But no trip to work would be complete without first stopping at the conveniently located Starbucks on your way to work for a refreshing cup of pumpkin spice latte. So you walk in and you swipe your card and you don't even think twice about the $5.25 charge. Or maybe you do think about it, but you, you just say to yourself, it's only five bucks. What does it hurt? Or maybe you think about it and you comically just kind of joke it off and say, yeah, but that's a small price to pay for not wanting to strangle my boss first thing in the morning. So you need your job to pay for your coffee and you need your coffee so that you can actually tolerate your job. It's, it's kind of a vicious cycle. Now I know there's a lot of Starbucks fanboys out there and what I'm about to say might sound like heresy, but what if you could cut out that morning cup of coffee? Or at minimum, what if you could replace that $5 cup of coffee with something that's a little bit cheaper? And you might be saying, but Ben, it's only five bucks. And you're right, five bucks is a small amount, but small changes over time lead to enormous results. So let's choose to take it and look at it a little bit differently. Instead of looking at it as a one-time $5.25 expense, let's, uh, let's expand the time frame a little bit. So in an average year, there's give or take about 250 work days in a year. So if you stop at Starbucks every morning before heading off to work, that five bucks just quickly turned into over $1,300 over the course of just one year. But it gets worse. You see, 1,300 bucks is already a fairly decent chunk of money, but what if instead of spending that money on a cup of coffee, what if you invested that into some kind of a retirement account? If you began at age 18 when you started working and you donated that same $1,300 to a retirement account, if you only earned a mere 8% interest, by the time you retired, you would have accumulated over $640,000. Now, six hundred and forty dollars may not be enough to retire off of, but it's a hell of a good start. Now, I'm not trying to pick on Starbucks or whatever your uh, favorite expensive gourmet coffee brand is, but expensive coffee has kind of become the de facto metaphor for wasteful spending. And it's not just coffee. We, we waste our money on a lot of different things. But the reality is, if you're willing to spend five bucks for a cup of coffee, then you are probably hemorrhaging money in other areas of your life that could easily be cut out or greatly reduced. So now let's take a look at a few other common items that people will typically buy and waste a lot of money on. And the compound effects of that money had you instead invested that money over a lifetime at an 8% return. Do you smoke? 
Because if you're a pack a day smoker and a pack of cigarettes is averaging you six and a half dollars, then that's gonna be over $2,300 per year, which if instead was invested, that would come out to over $1.1 million by the time you turn 65. Dining out. So maybe you go out every weekend, you take your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, and you go out maybe once a week and you spend 50, 60 bucks uh, on a meal. So let's just say that over a course of a month, you spend $250 eating out. This translates into $3,000 per year, which if it had been invested, would come out to almost one and a half million dollars by the time you turn 65. So what about your cell phone? I mean, we all want an iPhone 11X Plus Pro or I don't know, whatever the new gadget nowadays is called. And so if you spend an average of 80 bucks per month, then that's $960 per year, which at an 8% return comes out to almost half a million dollars by the time you retire. So if you knew that your cell phone plan over a lifetime was gonna cost you almost half a million dollars, would you still say it's worth it? Or would you try to find a slightly cheaper alternative? What if I could tell you that I have an iPhone and a smartphone and I pay $12 per month for my cell phone? Or a gym membership. So I Googled and it looks like the average gym membership costs about 58 bucks a month. Now some are a lot cheaper. You might be able to find a Planet Fitness or something like that close to you. And some are a lot more expensive. But at $58 a month, that's almost $350 thousand dollars over a course of a lifetime. Now a gym membership might be all fine and dandy if you're gonna actually use it. But right now it's close to the end of January. So I'm guessing the majority of you guys that just signed up for a new gym membership this year, cause you know, New Year's resolutions, right? You're already starting to fail. Chances are that you're not gonna go to the gym into February, March, April, and that gym membership is gonna be completely worthless. Now, maybe you like going to the gym and working out and all that, and that's great. I'm not saying don't spend money on that, but what if instead you took that $700 per year and you bought some equipment to use at the house? For $700 a year, you can buy some really nice equipment to set up in that spare bedroom or the garage or the basement that you're not using. Now maybe you don't spend money at Starbucks or the gym membership or whatever the case may be that's on this chart. But chances are you spend money in a lot of other wasteful areas. If we just took this person as an example, then over a course of a lifetime, this person would have over six million dollars in his account if he had just cut out some of this wasteful spending. So here's a personal challenge for you. Take a hard look at your everyday spending and identify three areas of your life where you feel you spend too much money on and try to cut back or eliminate that area. So if it's a recurring bill like a cell phone plan, cancel it and look for a cheaper alternative. Maybe sign up with Tello and pay 12 bucks a month like I do. Or if it's an impulse buy, like your morning stop at Starbucks, try to look for a cheaper alternative. Maybe go online and buy a Keurig. A few little changes today can make a dramatic impact on your financial future tomorrow. Remember, in our previous example, that gentleman would have had over $6 million in an account just by making a few minor tweaks to his everyday spending. Now, I'm not saying that you have to cut out or reduce all areas of your life, but if you can find at least a few areas and slightly cut back, over the long run, it will dramatically change your financial future. So there you have it, folks, how a few simple tweaks to your monthly spending could save you millions of dollars. If you found this video useful, then be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.